and I was like taught to believe that yeah like a big huge salad is healthier than a piece of beef and there's nothing like sexy there's no sex appeal to a steak or there's like a judgment or stigma that kind of came around red meat for women and mm. like we're just kind of taught like oh women eat salads men eat steaks and it, it definitely messes with people's mm. minds and like how they view food and even if it's subconscious, like I can guarantee there's a ton of young females that don't feel comfortable eating red meat. And now that I've learned like the science behind it, like the bioavailability, like why we need these animal foods in our diet, it's so much easier to convince myself to eat them that now I'm very comfortable with it. But it took like a mental shift. <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome to our new show. I'm Brian Sanders, and we're shooting this live on video from Evolve Healthcare, aka Sapien Medical Headquarters, aka Dr. Gary's Medical Clinic in Los Angeles. Please also check out the video version of this on the Food Lies YouTube channel. If you've arrived here from the Peak Human Podcast, you'll know of Dr. Gary Schliffer from the recent episode number 48. He was a smash hit, and I got tons of great feedback from listeners. Luckily, I already have been recording this new show with him as a co host. We're here today with myself, Dr. Gary, and Christy Storshuk, who's also a member of the Sapien team. You may know Christy from the Food Lies Instagram or Sean Baker's Human Performance Outliers podcast. She's our main writer and helper in all things, and she also works with Dr. Dom D'Agostino. If you didn't catch the episode with Dr. Gary, he's an internal medicine specialist and a co-founder of Sapien.org with myself and Yaniv Fatucci. Yaniv is a Hollywood producer, you could say, and is producing the Food Lies film with me. He'll be joining us in the next episode and as a co-host off and on. In this episode, we talk about a bunch of things that will help people get going with their health journey and simplify a lot of the conflicting info that's out there. Nutrition is this crazy topic that's so charged with ideals and personal beliefs and all kinds of conflicting interests like big food companies that have your money in mind, not your health, a bunch of misleading science that's been done over the last, say, 60 years, and a whole lot more. It's no wonder people are so confused about what's healthy these days, and Western societies have an insane rate of obesity and chronic disease. The purpose of this podcast series is to demystify this. Give info to people in a simple way that they can incorporate into their life. We're going to go beyond nutrition into all things that make for a healthy lifestyle, including mind, body, and spirit. There's so much more to health beyond what you eat. We'll get into the sapien diet and the sapien lifestyle a lot. The sapient lifestyle is what happens when you put all these things together. It's how humans can live optimally using ancestral principles and modern science. For more info on sapien, specifically what foods to eat, and more on what we're doing, go to sapien.org. Thanks, everyone. Please enjoy the show. Okay. <laughs> hey. We're here. We're glad right. to be here. We're at Evolve Healthcare. We're in LA. We got some of the sapien team together. We're missing a need who will be in the next episode. But we're going to introduce our show and let everyone know what this new show is, why is it different from Peak Human, and what kind of fun stuff we're going to be getting into. We're going to be having fun here. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to have all kinds of guests. It's going to be more live. We'll probably do it on Instagram Live, Facebook, maybe live, get it on YouTube. We'll have people come, you know, if people are in town, you know, we know we got Dr. Paul Saladino in town Excited next for weekend. That. We Excited have... For that some other people I met at the conference at Paleo FX. So we're gonna get all kinds of different people into the office. And Dr. Gary here, you know, he's doing his thing. In, this is his office, he's gonna be coming in hot. <laughs> he's gonna be, you know, coming off of patients and all this, you know, talk about this clinical s setting and, you know, what putting this stuff into practice, so. Yeah, I'm really excited to get involved uh, with Brian's podcast. Um, and we've been talking about this for a really long time now. And finally, we're able to put it all together. Um, I was really excited listening to Brian's podcast. I've learned so much from him. Mm -hmm. And uh, our goal is to really make it a little more practical, uh, bring in some of my clinical experience, and have fun with it, and kind of talk to people um, that aren't all scientists and you know, kind of more uh, doctors and food writers like Christy here, and, and kind of get more perspectives on um, not just nutrition, but on overall wellness, you know, something we call the sapien lifestyle. Absolutely, so we're gonna go around and introduce each person in case you're not familiar. Um, I'll go last, because hopefully people know who I am right now. <laughs> but um, 
we all are really passionate about nutrition and I think it's a little bit odd to some people why we're so obsessed with it. It's like, hey, it's just food. And we're like, hey, no, it's not. It's no, so much not. more. But uh, I think it's good for us to start off and tell people how we got into this and why it became such a big part of our life. So, Dr. Gary, why don't you I start? I can start. So, I'm Dr. Gary Schliffer. I'm an internal medicine doctor. I uh, trained at Indiana University. Um, I'm a, my fourth year now after training, and I'm really, really passionate about nutrition and food for a lot of reasons. But uh, I had a very interesting experience through my training. There was a lot of frustrations, a lot of confusion. <laughs> And sort of through over the last few years, through my relationship with Brian, by working through with my other colleagues, I've discovered that food really is medicine, which I wasn't taught about, uh, at least not in that um, sort of perspective. And I've started to apply what I've learned in my practice here at Evolve Healthcare over the last few years. Uh, uh, again, working with Brian to help develop our uh, food and nutrition program, which we call the Sapien Diet and our lifestyle program. And it's been really amazing to watch people change. Um, and that's what I'm really here to share with everyone is, you know, there's a lot of fad diets out there. There's a lot of information out there that's very confusing. And I, I do think that we've, we've started to distill some of it down to really useful, meaningful um, action plans that are really changing people's lives. And I think that's what really connects the three of us and, and Yaniv who's not here is just this idea that you can really change your life by changing what you put in your mouth. Something that simple can really change your life. And so I'm really passionate and excited to share my story and to learn from people like Christy and, and others that we'll have on the podcast about how we can use food as medicine and how we can live our best lives. Awesome. Um, so yeah, that's good. Yeah, I wanna hear more of your story. I know you have some more details of going to residency and oh, stuff man. like that. But let's get to Christy. <laughs> so Christy is our head writer. She worked with Dom D'Agostino as a science writer. I coached her a little bit. <laughs> uh, she's Sorry, joined, Dom. <laughs> she's <joined> safe in. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, well, how did you get into all this stuff? Yeah, so I grew up really understanding that food was medicine from a young age. I, my family owns a supplement store, so I was always exposed to like naturopaths and nutritionists and just natural supplements and I quickly discovered that I really liked experimenting with different diets so when I was in my teens I went through a period of veganism, paleo, got introduced to the ketogenic diet just from listening to podcasts I think and uh, but I really had a passion for science so I had a science background in university and so I was looking at research opportunities leaving school and I reached out to Dom Diagostino um, he happened to reply to me, and he wasn't accepting new students into his lab at the time, but he offered me a position to handle his educational platform. So I quickly dove into ketogenic nutrition and metabolic therapies, and that was about a year and a half ago, and I haven't looked back. I literally, every day, I'm on PubMed and just synthesizing the science and trying to really fill that gap between scientists and the layman. And uh, it's a struggle. Huge I'm still gap. working on it. Huge gap. But uh, yeah, that's basically my role in this nutrition world is trying to relay the, the confusing science behind diet and nutrition and get it into a communicational form for people to understand. And I was really, why I'm so passionate about the ketogenic diet specifically though is because it's so backed by science. So it's the only real diet that has a proven track record as like saving people's lives and being used. It's the pure example of food as medicine. It literally changes our metabolic state and uh, ketone bodies themselves are basically a medicine. So magic. Oh, well, basically it's probably how we're supposed to be. Right. right? We've <laughs> just lost our way. But we'll get into that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's the most studied diet. Yeah, for sure. Especially in medicine. So yeah. But people don't know who you are. Uh, yeah, well, we got some new people here. So, yeah, I'm Brian Sanders. I'm s sort of a lot of things. I'm a health coach. I'm a, I'm a mechanical engineer. I started at UCLA in mechanical engineering, and then I got into tech, and so I got that whole thing under my belt, and then I got back into filmmaking, which is what my first love was growing up, and so I put all those things together into the Food Lies film, which is huge editing right now, being edited, and 
uh, the Sapien company, which is kind of a lot of things put together, and it's putting this into practice in this clinic at, with Gary, Dr. Gary at the wall. It's putting out informational content on social media, on YouTube. It's a whole health program. Christy's helping make an, a whole education platform, right, where we can give our patients and more beyond our patients this information and, as you said, distill it down to something digestible and, and easy to figure out because everyone knows that you can find opposing viewpoints on nutrition. Mm -hmm. It's like insane. You can open up any magazine or any type of website or news program and it's completely different. It's conflicting, it's confusing, and people ask me questions about it all day yeah. on Instagram or wherever. They, Even though they're listening to me, they're still confused. Yeah. They listen to all right. the podcast episodes right. and they're still like, so wait, what, 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 what is, I, I thought that sugar was our preferred fuel source. Like I just right. read in this study that sugar right. glucose is preferentially burned. I'm like, I mean, preferentially burned is different from your body's preferred fuel source, like long term. So stuff like that. So th we're, we're trying to get it all out to people in an easy to understand way. And we're putting on sapien.org too. That's going to get more and more um, informative. And I guess a, a one way to rephrase it is we're trying to leverage technology to communicate what we've learned and what we're learning to a more wide audience. I think one thing that we've learned is that it's a very niche environment. It's a very niche community that is as passionate about food and nutrition as we are. And a lot of people are really anchored in dogma, either new, new or old, right? Yeah. Like, new, yeah, like they're either obsessed with keto or they're obsessed with veganism, uh, veganism or, or they're I'm a Mediterranean diet. I was trained 30 years ago to recommend a Mediterranean diet and five meals a day and that's what I'm going to recommend and nothing else works and it's I think our our goal is to be a little more open-minded I know Brian's brought that up to us a lot is hey let's try to open the door to everyone to talk and and share ideas and I think that that's our real goal is to share ideas using all the new platforms including mm -hmm. you know we were really want to make a big presence on YouTube um, in the podcast community I know we're working with some radio stations also to kind of share um, our content and and this movies um, are real a real the dream Brian's mm -hmm. dream and, and it's become really all of our dreams because it's so important you know we have been lied to for decades yeah well yeah so food lies the way I explain it as it's a 95 minute thesis, audio visual thesis of everything that I've learned and that we've all learned that just shows the, the route we've gone down and how wrong it was, what we should be eating, the science behind it, how to do it sustainably. It's all laid out. So many people ask me, oh, like, how do I talk to my mom about this? How do my friend down the street mm -hmm, you know, says this? Mm -hmm. It's like, if I could just give them 95 minutes, right. it's like, watch this. It's going to have everything. It's going to have graphs. It's going to have science studies. There's going to be animations. So I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be huge. And then Gary mentioned technology. I didn't quite mention that part of Sapien where we're building something like Verda Health. Verda's great. It has great doctors like Dr. Bullock and Finney who've been studying metabolic you know, ketosis and that stuff for years and years and decades. And we're going to kind of build some similar technology that allows doctors, patients, and health coaches stay in communication, stay on top of each other. Like there's a smart scale. And Speaking of which, yeah. sidebar, I know it's a podcast, but still important. I do have a solution for our HIPAA compliance issue. Mm. Mm. What a little sidebar. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, it's, yeah, so we're... So we're it's coming, to, guys. Yeah, we're integrating uh, the technology together with, yeah, like say a smart scale. And so you can step on it and the doctor and the health coach can see. So you're more compliant. You're not going to screw up or if you want to connect a ketone meter. So it's like, oh, you did, you know, eat pancakes this morning. Cause <laughs> I can tell. And for those of you that don't know, you know, we use the word health coaches because, um, you know, as a physician, I've, I've struggled to use nutritionists and dietitians in my practice, both during training and now in my private practice simply because people are all over the place with the recommendations that they use. And it's been my experience that a lot of people that are formally trained in nutrition, you know, Western medicine ideas, 
um, are, are off base. They're not consistent with what we're recommending and, and they're a little bit anchored in the ideas that they were trained to do, which is fine, um, but we're really trying to move the dial on changing how, what people recommend and changing how people eat. And to do that, you need like-minded people. Mm. So Brian is a health coach and he's helped me develop the, or developed with me this, this diet program and, and is instrumental in educating our patients. And our goal is to kind of expand the network to include more health coaches and other scientists and, and sort of contributors so that everyone could be involved in a community. And right now, that doesn't exist. Mm, yeah, and make it available. So I go to these conferences and talk to a lot of other doctors that are like-minded and they're so into this stuff. And they're just like, well, how am I gonna implement this program? I'm only one person. Yeah. I have like eight minutes, even if they're a good doctor, oh, I have 30 minutes with a patient. Yeah. But how are you gonna do that? You, this needs to be, you know, you need infrastructure around it. And, and a constant updating. Week constant. to week, yeah. So. That's, that's so we are excited for this app. It's forthcoming. Yeah. <laughs> and okay, so yeah, maybe we should. <laughs> but yeah, let's get into more of this show instead okay. of just uh, vain ideas here. Let's. People want to know what the Sapien diet is. So I can introduce that. Yeah. So I'll tell this the story to kind of introduce the Sapien diet. So. When I finished my training as an internal medicine doctor, I still was very confused with what to eat myself and what to recommend to patients. I went through a series of frustrating experiences where I got into arguments with nutritionists about, you know, what is a carb control diet for a diabetic? You know, what is the benefit of a low fat diet for a person with heart disease? And I was really, really confused. And one day, Brian I, and I, as well as Yaniv, went on a trip to go snowboarding. Uh, but had nothing to do with food or nutrition ever, and we just thought Brian was crazy and wasn't eating normal food. <laughs> like literally, me and Yaniv were, thought you were crazy. But we also know that you're a brilliant guy, and we were like, all right, let's see what this guy has to say. And i pretty sure I argued with you vehemently mm -hmm. about oh no, like a Mediterranean diet, not knowing what a Mediterranean diet was despite 13 years of training. For the record, no one knows, those. right? Yeah. So, but I was still arguing. Like, I was still part of the system of like, I'm gonna argue with him just because that's how I was trained. You know, eat five meals a day, breakfast is the most important meal of the day, all these things that sort of have been become myths almost, right? And, uh, and, and Brian kind of put a, a, a worm in my ear about, hey, maybe, we don't need to eat so much mm -hmm. and so frequently, and maybe we need to focus on, uh, you know, nutrient density instead of, uh, you know, all this other stuff. Restricting I was trained calories, or restricting or calories, or portion control, or all this of carbs. Yeah, and so that sort of started the Sapien movement, if you will. And over the last few years, we developed the Sapien diet. And what I really Sapien framework. Sapien yeah. framework. It's a lifestyle, guys. Yeah. We we've struggled to use the word diet to replace yeah. it. And again, if you guys have any ideas of a better word, yeah. Hit us up, reach out to us yeah. at Dr. Gary Evolve, at Food Lies on Instagram. Let us know because we, we'd love to change the word. But as it is, it's the Sapien diet. And what I worked with Brian on was to sort of uh, distill it down to something that people can really grasp their hands on. So we came up with the three pillars of the Sapien diet. Um, and for people in the community, they're going to say, duh, <laughs> right? Yeah. But for like the majority of my patients, all three of these concepts, well, all two of them are really novel concepts. So let's go through them. Uh, uh, the first is high fat, low carb. And what we mean by that is eating a a relatively high proportion of healthy fats and restricting carbohydrates, especially simple carbohydrates like sugar and grain. And what I say is focus on protein, embrace fat, and limit carbs. I love it. And that's a great way to kind of wrap up high fat, low carb. Exactly. And I've really, by the way, started applying this like fo idea of focusing on protein because when you focus on healthy protein and you accept that lean protein does not necessarily mean it's healthy, but healthy fat Protein, the protein with the protein that kind of gets the job done right mm -hmm. like you don't in that's it. yeah, it's yeah like that's really right? it because you're, that just means like a good source of animal food and fat and then you're just not going to have much room on your plate for carbs or anything else right. 
but it's, it's this is going to keep you full this is going to keep you going and that's what people struggle with the most when they're trying to lose weight or maintain weight is that they're always hungry right. so this whole thing about focusing on protein I'm not saying it's going to be like 80 percent protein in your diet or anything I'm just saying when you're building a meal you focus on what is my source right. of protein. That's the, the, the center of your meal is not yeah. a pie, pile of vegetables. Yeah, it's not pasta, it's not salad, right. it's, it's not... Eggplant parmesan. Yeah. Which uh, <laughs> is crazy. But okay. Yeah. So, that's, so a, that's one. Christy, anything on high fat, low carb? Well, no. Not, mm -hmm. that, not that pillar. <laughs> so the second pillar is one I think most people understand, except when I actually start clinically explaining it to them, they have no idea what they're talking about. And that's eat only whole foods. Nutrient dense whole foods. That's number number one or two. It doesn't matter the order of it. Yeah, there's no order. That that's the most important and people need to realize that pasta is not a whole food. Right. right. Whole wheat is not a whole food. It's a refined grain. Yeah. Right? So you could say, Oh I've got this at Whole Foods. Look at this yeah, yeah. pasta. <laughs> like I know I talked to a woman who thought that if you walk in the door of Whole Foods you're healthy. Like anything in the store is healthy. Here's a question I have. So what if you get this super expensive raw manuka honey? That's a whole food, like a right? Well, that's a whole lot of sugar. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a whole but I mean I, I don't know. That's a long story. Well see the, this is where the subtleties honey. of where yeah. you got the three pillars interacting with each other. So yes, only whole foods. But just because it's a whole food, if it's just a pile of whole sugar like a bunch of honey still probably shouldn't be eating that every day, right? Yeah, you gotta tie it in with the first pillar, which right. is high fat, low carb. And you have to tie it with your goals yeah. and your situation. If you're at your goal weight and you're an athlete, so people ask me, I'm like, yeah, but I'm at my goal weight. I kind of even want to put on weight and I'm working out, I'm training for decathlon. Like, I'm not gonna worry if I have a little bit of honey. Right, and that's the thing is, we're really trying to create a rubric for people to follow. Everyone's diet should be customized to themselves. And I think over the next few decades, we'll find ways to test people's carb tolerance, right? People's ability to process certain fats. Uh, we'll figure out, I think, over time, how different people have different lipid metabolisms, right? So when you see these people with high triglycerides or really high HDLs, and you can't really figure, we're gonna get there, right? Like, people are working on that. But in the short term, we do know that eating sugar all the time is bad. <laughs> Yeah. So, so I do think a, a rubric, a framework, like Brian said, is really useful for everyone to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's that's that one. A lot of well. And again, we could probably do a whole podcast on I what think, whole foods well, are and what what's nutrient dense. Yeah. Right. right. I mean, people have the wrong idea of nutrient density. Pause. Can you hit that space bar? Beautiful. People have a wrong idea of nutrient density because they we were told that plants are so healthy and this and that. And can you define nutrient density for those yes. that don't know? Because it's a it's a new relatively new term for me. It was once you described it, I was like, oh yeah, duh, right? But yeah. but it's a newish term for a lot. Can you yeah, yeah. Or it? they don't know what it is. So yeah. it to me, which I think it's it's the amount of the amount of bioavailable essential fatty acids, amino acids, vitamins, and minerals. Not okay? sugar. <laughs> bioavailable fatty acids, amino acids, vitamins, minerals. So, so per weight. Per weight. <laughs> well, that's that's a whole different story too. Is every day per calorie, per weight, there's a lot of different. But basically, ways. nutrients that your body can actually use. Bioavailable. And those nutrients are generally a fat source, which is protein or carbs, and a building block to muscles and everything in your body, which is protein. Yeah, and in animal foods, it's in the 90% bioavailability. Right. And plant foods, I mean, sometimes it's as low as like 1%. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's, it's like the idea, I, I always use this idea in clinical practices, like kale versus steak and B vitamins, right? Mm -hmm. You have B vitamins in those plants, but you can't absorb them, especially in a raw form, right? Yeah, the difference between vitamin K1 and K2, and animal foods have K2, and K1 is just, a lot of us don't have the pathway. But anything. if you held up those two foods to the general public, they would choose the kale as the healthier source. Right. Every time we've been brainwashed to think that, and I don't think all plant foods are bad. A lot of people think that I'm just trashing on plant foods nonstop, and I eat them every day, I eat them with every meal. I just, 
they're not a big part of my diet. And I look out for ones that have anti-nutrients, which we're going to do a whole yeah, bunch great. of episodes yeah, on. I love it. And then they're just not that bioavailable. So if you know, you're not getting what you think you are, even if you look up the USDA data and like, oh, well, kale has this much iron. It's like, well, you don't get that iron. We well, and, plus, and by the way, you got to cook it down to get anything really. Like we yeah, can't, can we can't lose, digest all this raw stuff. You can like, lose stuff by cooking it. Doesn't well. work. There's and so, you can lose yeah. rye, right? right. There's, there's so much. Yeah. All right, we, we, we should okay. move on to the third pillar, which is not eating all the time. And is the it's most important simple. pillar. Most it important. Is most by far. You said that about every pillar. This no, is no. Most important. I, this is how I present it. Again, in <laughs> clinical settings, I'm always going to try to reframe what we're talking about in a clinical setting because I think that's our goal. Um, Because a lot of the science stuff, if you really want to dive into a lot of it, you can go to the Peak Human podcast and Brian's interviewed the world's leading researchers on every one of these specific topics. And that's how he's become so knowledgeable on it and really taught me as well as many other people about it. So please look at those episodes. But um, as far as clinical relevance, you in order to do so the third pillar intermittent fasting in order to do it successfully you essentially have to eat a healthy diet which is the two, first two pillars a high fat low carb whole food based diet yeah if you're eating carbs you're going to be hungry all the time and it's yeah. not going to work and you're not going to be able to do the condensed eating window we always put that positive spin on it condensed. instead of not instead of fasting it's hey i'm just not eating all the time and i'm eating a lot in a smaller window and I mean, we should include Christy in this. She wrote some, some Yeah, good I was content. about to, you nailed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she wrote what, some good Christy, content on why we should do this. And Tell us like the benefits of it. Cause, Cause this is something I really try to emphasize to people is tell us about like the benefits of intermittent fasting, condensed eating window, feeding window, whatever we're gonna call it. <laughs> yeah, well, we need to give our bodies a break from digesting food. Like we don't always wanna be com- like bombarding our system. We have other things to repair and like people always throw out the word autophagy. Autophagy. And, <laughs> but it's true. Like if you fast past like 16 hours, maybe you are getting a little bit of autophagy. And that's kind of the window that we recommend is fasting for like 14 to 16 hours. Can you describe to people what autophagy is? <laughs> it's our cellular cleanup mechanism. Right. So we're uh, taking like old damaged proteins or just cellular components that aren't serving us anymore and we are taking the building blocks from them and repurposing them to build new healthier cells. And so we're repairing our cells and in the process we're preventing aging and yes. preventing disease. Think about Alzheimer's. We mm. have these plaques that build up in our brain and new autophagy research. is a part of clearing that out. Like, new research right here. Type 3 diabetes people. Yep. Alzheimer's. Yeah. It's yeah. related Insulin to insulin resistance of the brain. So many different things. Yeah. So intermittent fasting, yeah. You give your body a break. Gives your your cells time to clean up and you're not just like even just like sleeping so when you, your blood flow goes to your stomach to digest yes. food you're not like allowing yourself to your body temperature has to cool before bed so it just like has so many uh, applications to improving your health with different aspects of factors in our life I noticed she did not even mention weight loss Mm. Right, like yeah. no, no. I, I bring that up as important. Yeah. Is anyone who knows anything about intermittent fasting realizes that the benefits are for your brain, for your like overall well-being, for your cellular repair, longevity, longevity for insulin resistance. The weight loss is profound for those that are obese, but it's a side effect. It's like it's not even what we're after here. It's right? like the easy, it's the low-hanging fruit of like trying to lose weight or trying to create a calorie deficit, which is required to lose weight. So if you're condensing your eating window, it's like you're not giving yourself a chance to eat as frequently and the less frequently you eat, we're hoping that that means that you're just eating less. Well, the less chance, every time you eat, there's a chance you're gonna overeat because you tend to eat until you're full. Right, so I do that. I love to eat till I'm full. I you eat know. till I'm too full. I've seen it. I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm a, <laughs> but if you're only doing that twice a day. But if I'm only doing it twice a day, then it's wor- it's perfect that I'm full, I'm happy all the time, and I'm never hungry, <laughs> and I get to eat like a maniac. And yeah, keep your hands foods. away from Brian when it's feeding time. <laughs> <laughs> but like Brian said, he's not trying to lose weight, so yeah. it might be different for well, we can't say that everyone can just eat so everyone's good <laughs> yeah. at all times, but yes. Well, and it's also like people have different ideas of content, right? <laughs> like there's people that, you know, oh, I'm full, they're, they're full. And other people, I'm full and they're literally, the food is up to their neck, right? So people have been, uh, you know, 
through their various dietary and lifestyle changes have really messed up what their even their own baseline of what is full what is satiated what is a normal meal you know and some what people, is normal how many times to eat it's like oh well i it's noon i gotta eat it's like, like oh we're all going out i gotta eat one of the things i say to all my patients every patient that i introduce the word intermittent fasting to is i say immediately it's a misnomer right oh, it's yeah. the wrong word it only works because our baseline is eating so frequently that what we're recommending relative to baseline is seems, seems yeah. like fasting. It's when not. in reality, it's just called normal eating. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't this. need to wake up and put food in your mouth. You don't need to fall asleep digesting food. Mm. You need to eat enough food to sustain you, to make you feel good. And you don't need to do that throughout the course of the entire day. You can do that in a small window. Mm. Yes, you can eat one large meal and you're fine. That meal, yeah, meal, that meal just has to be that. nutrient yeah. dense, delicious, nutritious foods. It cannot be a plate of pasta, rice, and potatoes. Like you can't, you can't do well on that. Yeah, it's crazy that we have to try so hard to convince people oh of an God. evolutionary type of diet and way yeah. of eating when, yeah, we're just trying to we're Go putting back. in practice of reversing all the bad nutrition advice we've been taught throughout yeah. the last. Yeah, well, and then even. Even the food choices, it's so skewed right now. And people just feel like, well, there's this exists, like Pop Tarts exist. You know, I'm like, it sucks that Pop Tarts exist because now you have to not eat them. Or <laughs> there's all these donuts and all these things that, yeah, I mean, I'm not denying they're delicious, right. but you can't just think it's normal to eat those all the time just because in modern society people eat them all the time. Right. And, and so not, not, notice what he's saying <laughs> it's okay to eat them, yeah. not eat them all the time. Yeah. So Brian made this really great chart that I use all the time, and I really want you to print it out for me to put yeah. on the wall because I but just on use Instagram. it. So it's on Instagram, Food Lies at Food Lies. Check it out, guys. It'll be in the movie. But basically, it's a it's a month calendar, uh -huh. and on each day he's got like three carbohydrates because most like people cupcake. yeah most people have three meals a day at least, and with each meal there's at least some rice, there's at least some potato there's some sweet there's some carbohydrate well, it's just a treat you can even think of it as just someone having a coffee with a ton of sugar in the morning right like frappuccino like, full of sugar yeah so i was even just saying this as treats like not even if you have you can have you know rice in your meal if you're eating like a normal whole foods diet and you're not metabolically damaged and you know what i mean it's like people in japan eat rice i get it they're not all a mess but i i was making the point that it's these are treats. People think that they they need three treats a day, right? It's I mean, like a, a muffin. A muffin is a treat. A muffin is not a I mean, muffin. waking up for breakfast and having dessert for breakfast is insane. Yeah. And that's what America does. And I think that's like the simple little hanging fruit of just skip it. You don't even have to replace it. Just skip it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. But anyway, the point is, is on his chart, he's got three whatever, snacks, carbs, however you want to look at it. And the real goal is one or two per week. Yeah. Like per week. And that to people blows their mind. They're like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. I can't even process that. You but know? that's what we did. People go back to honey. People love to bring up the Hadza, the tribe in Africa that we've studied. And they're like, oh my God, these Hadza, they, they're so lean and they live forever and all this and healthy and they eat honey. Like, yeah, they came across a honey hive like every once, once a week and they crushed honey. Yeah. <laughs> so what? They were like out hunting and looking for the next animal. And of course they need energy. It's a sweet, awesome treat and they ate it. That's once a week. I mean, you could say the same about fresh fruit before the world of agriculture took over is we had access to fresh fruit a few months a year and we ate all the fresh fruit we could and sure our insulin spiked at that time, but it, it's fine. And it helped us fatten and it helped up for winter. Yeah, it helped us fatten up for winter, exactly. But we didn't have a grocery store full of fake shit that's imported using fossil fuels, ruining our planet. Engineered to be sweeter. Engineered to be, right, or, or completely like engineered from the ground up to be a whole different like plant. Yeah. And, and people are saying, oh, this is healthy. And I'm like, that was imported from halfway across the world. Mm -hmm. They used so much fuel and energy to bring it here. And you're sitting here taking a moral high ground over my meat consumption <laughs> when your food is actually shitting up the planet mm -hmm. and it's not good for you. Like yeah, it's, it's crazy. Like you don't have bananas every day. No, we no society has bananas every day. Yeah. Like, and you eat more of it too. So you're just buying more food. And yeah, you need more of it, it to get full. When you can have, you know, like a ten ounce steak could fill you up. 
or you can eat like 40 ounces of bananas <laughs> and not be and be hungry like a I, second later. I saw this patient yesterday um she's just a great lady and she's been like going to all these like holistic healer people chiropractor people they're great right but they all they're not nutrition people right mm -hmm. and so she's gained like 30 pounds in the last since i met her two years and and she the only thing she's ever tried is like a, a, a vegan diet a vegetarian mm -hmm. diet and then the low fat recommendations uh, you know and all of them kept pushing this and she got put on hormones and she got put on all these supplements like so many supplements and i'm like no one has ever and and she tells me she's like you know every time i eat meat a steak i feel better but but i you know just i've never been told that that's good for me yeah it's and i'm just like cancer <laughs> i'm sitting there and literally my head is exploding yeah because because oh it, so there's that and then the other thing she says to me i'm like so how many times do you eat per day you know i'm like three she's like yeah well just three because i don't have more time so what she's saying to me, she's expecting me to say, you should eat more frequently, more meals. Mm -hmm. You know, she's so, she's been educated over the years. This is a very bright lady, right? Mm -hmm. That's very involved, right? She's got resources to spend on her health. She spent a lot of time educating. And her default is the steak is bad for me and I need to eat five meals a day. Mm -hmm. So she's literally just told to force feed herself to make her feel better. And she just gets sicker and fatter. And everyone's response is to continue to, to recommend the same thing. Yeah. And so that's the definition of insanity, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, you're doing great. Just double down. Just constantly. double down on a shit that's not working. Yeah. Crazy. It's guys. hard for people to figure out and I didn't figure it out. It took me years of research and you know testing it on myself. Because year, two years ago, my sister told me about these people that she knew in Utah that would eat steak every night. They're like, oh yeah, they just grill steaks every night. They're insane. I was like, what is wrong with these people? These people are absurd. Like who yeah. would do that? And now it's exactly what I do. Yeah. Exactly what I do. And I hang out with a lot of people. Who do <laughs> that too. Well, and similarly, I used to think that fasting was bad, right? I used to mm -hmm. think that not eating was bad. And then in residency, I would inherently, instinctually almost not eat when I was working really hard because I was just like operating on a higher level, right? My mm -hmm. brain was more sharp. You're probably in ketosis. I was in ketosis, no. <laughs> now I know. Oh, no. I remember that feeling and I'd be like, and I, but I'd be in my head thinking, this is bad for me, I'm, I'm cheating somehow, right? Like, oh my God, what, what? I'm, I'm starving. I'm, I'm degrading my myself. Body. I'm degrading my body, I'm ca yeah. catabolic, all this stuff. When in reality, I was in ketosis. My brain was happier. My body was happier. And you're instead not, of eating hungry. that, that that bowl of nachos at the end of my shift like I did all I had to do was eat like some healthy meat and I would have woke up yeah. feeling fired up instead I'd wake up feeling all bloated and sluggish every day because I was always eating carbs every day I did not know that I could go a day without carbs yeah until a few years ago that didn't even that wasn't a reality yeah. well that's what everyone thinks well I mean that's just Heart healthy healthy brains. Brains. yeah well Okay. There's so people, much in this conversation. I know, I know. A lot of people think that car it's fine. It's fine. A lot of people think that I just hate carbs or that you know there's these low carb zealots. People are like, oh you're just a zealot, you're just against carbs. And I'm trying to say there's no reason to eat carbs. Give me one good reason I should eat carbs. Well, they're not nutrient. They're dense. delicious. They're delicious. So, Other than the taste. The cheat meal. I'm saying the reason to eat carbs is to enjoy your life. Okay. So yes. <laughs> like all right, like, oh, absolutely. Like but, but you just people, don't need to do that every day. But people don't understand the nutrient density part. It's like, right. okay, I'll go back into nutrient density. It's the, the, the amount, the ratio, you could say, of the nutrients and good things like protein compared to just pure energy. And so carbs are mostly just pure energy in the form of glucose. And, they don't, and a lot of the foods that are high carb don't have a lot of nutrient value. Right, so that's a good scientific reason to not eat carbs. It's not just because I'm some crazy low right, carb person, right. <laughs> right? You know, so many people just say that online or just random people. Well, I so. think so much of it is just going at really against what what people think. And another reason why I think people are so um, married to their carb consumption is that it makes you feel good. So th you, you can't, yeah. you know, temporarily, right? You don't know how you feel bad because at baseline now you feel bad all the time because you're eating the carbs, but it acutely, it makes you feel good. And I think that we've, we've built a society 
that one needs immediate graf- gratification and two does not focus at all and I think it's changing but I hope so and that's one of our big goals at Sapien is to really focus on spiritual and emotional health right if you're depressed or not even depressed but just not happy with your life not not living your best day-to-day life you our society really put, encourages you to turn to food to feel better mm-hmm. right eat that muffin it makes you feel better for a little bit anyway and and you move on and then in two hours you got to have that bar and that's sweet and then you can have your frappuccino and then you can have you know dessert after dinner and that kind of keeps this like dopamine push happening and I, and I do think that one of the one of the most powerful recommendations I give as a result of our sapien program is the lifestyle component mm-hmm. and so we you know I, I love the analogy of we're like a really complicated plant we need food light and sun to feel good right well movement too in our case because plants don't move that much but um, you know I tell every patient every single day you need to move some kind of exercise whether it's minimal effective dose training whether it's yoga whether it's walking. running walking playing with your dog whatever mm-hmm. you need sunlight you need to get your even if it's just five minutes I like to recommend 15 to 20 minutes of real sun exposure you know we've scared people so much from cancer because we were kind of going over the top with sun exposure, but really without sun exposure, your vitamin D plummets, your, your, um, your, um, sleep cycles are off. It's a a big, it's your mood, your moods off. It's a big nightmare and people don't realize how powerful a supplement some sun exposure is. Um, uh, sleep, sleep. Thank you. (laughs) Sleep. There's a four. Yeah, you got it. So sleep, like people don't realize that not sleeping causes and is correlated with, for sure, brain disease, and eventually we will prove, like Christy was saying, we cannot clear the, the, the poisons in our brain without yeah. sleep, right? And it's very correlated with insulin resistance. Very, because the cortisol levels and yeah. these hormones that and are affected by overeating, I mean, just, I mean, I do it. If I don't sleep, Absolutely. I'm gonna like go, like go to the airport, you know, yeah. didn't sleep, and you just like get McDonald's or something. Yep. Yep. You're just like, screw yep. up. You wake up all feeling yeah. shitty and you want that sweet. And yeah. that's your brain's program. And then the fourth thing is stress relief. And this is huge. You know, in a world where self care has gone by the wayside, mm-hmm. doing something that makes you happy, like personally, not stress relief like what you're recommended, but something, I always say something that makes you happy, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's hanging out with your kids or having sex or going for that workout. For some people, working out is stressful. It doesn't actually relax them. So I'm like, do what you love. Read a book. Stop. Put, put this down like for a second, you know? <laughs> but, but I think if you're not doing each one of those four things on a regular basis every day, you're not going to be successful. And, and you're going to go towards that shitty food because you're not living your best life. Yeah, you know what's crazy? I hear more and more about alcoholism connected with your diet, and that people who are just eating a bad diet, that that's what's kind of pushing it along for some people. And that I've talked to a lot of people personally, they message me and they're like, yeah, I started eating like a nutrient dense diet and I haven't drank since. Yeah, it's crazy, they just feel better. I think even when- Even Adele, sorry. Oh even yeah, Adele, no, no, you're good. Even Adele, who are falling around for the Flu Lies film. She's, she's amazing by the way, guys. Yeah, she's had an amazing journey. Weight loss is just a side effect. She's had like a million benefits. Oh my God, but she's she, inspiring. She's so words. great and she just, she just stopped drinking. It's not like she ever drank. I mean, she drank like on the weekends with her friends like a tiny bit and she's like, oh yeah, I don't even do that anymore. I think when you live in this world of brain fog that so many people are just used to, right? And it's not until you kind of separate yourself from the shackles of food that you realize your brain clears up and then you don't need to get drunk. You don't need to get drunk. You don't need to get high. You're high on life. And as, sorry, fucked out as that term has become, it's true, you know? And people don't believe us when we say, if you change what you put in your mouth, you will literally feel that, like literally feel significantly better, think better, sleep better, have more libido, mm. all these amazing things. It's like too good to be true. It's not, it's yeah. simple. Yeah, every everything you just mentioned is tied back to nutrition though. So if we're yeah. fueling our body properly, we're gonna have the energy to work out. We're gonna have better sleep. We're yeah. gonna like, want to be active and be around it's people all, and yeah it's crazy it's all connected and actually i should just bring this up or have christy talk about this the big difference i just want to tell this one story of how different it is when you change what you put in your body 
we were at Pale FX this weekend. We met a, a woman or a, a girl who was a vegan, a huge vegan influencer named Raw Alignment. She had a, like a million, oh I saw that, a million kind of YouTube yeah. subscribers. Raw you know, alignment. just going all into this vegan diet, and then her health came crashing down. So tell her story a little bit. <laughs> you talked to her more than me. She was a raw vegan, and like that's what she promoted. And a lot of other young girls on YouTube and Instagram promoting the same thing. So they like there's there's a huge online raw vegan community um, throughout like the last like four years. And now it's funny like a majority of them are transitioning to an animal based diet. And so Elise from Raw Alignment specifically was having like crazy health issues with like mold toxicity, like brain fog, low energy, just her health was deteriorating. She said she had no sex drive for over a year. Yeah. So Yeah, if you're not so taking things. in healthy fats, yeah, how can you make were hormones? So messed up. Boy. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. It's like it's sad but funny because it's so simple. Like hormones, cell membranes, brain cells are all made of fat. What fantasy world can you eat a diet that doesn't contain healthy fats and maintain those systems? Well, yeah, and on a vegan diet, like where you're going to be predominantly eating omega-6 fatty acids. So yeah. like if your whole body is made up of these omega-6s versus getting the quality omega-3s from animal foods, from fish, from like, yeah, animal foods. Don't anything. tell us avocado. That's the one, like one v plant that's got some good fat in it. Yeah, Don't stop. But, but even stop. like these, like <laughs> DHA and EPA in plant foods, yeah, yeah, they're right. not, they're in a form of, or they're not in plant foods, it's in the form of ALA, which is not converted to the essential DHA and EPA that our brain literally needs. So not bioavailable, like Brian was saying. Right, we don't have, mm -hmm. we can't convert this form into what we need. And so that is like one of my biggest concerns with a vegan diet. And like maybe if you're supplementing with a marine based, DHA EPA supplement, then that could be a way you could get it. But if you have to supplement your diet, like maybe reconsider the diet that you're eating. Like evolutionarily, it just doesn't make sense to be yeah. eating a diet that requires these supplements to make up for something that's lacking on your plate. And if you if we can share like how to do that sustainably, and uh, that's like one of people's biggest arguments is like, oh, we have the population is too big, we can't feed the world on animal products, but. I think Brian could speak to that. Oh, I, we're going to do a whole episode of that. Yeah. We could definitely. But just to world. suffice to say, you can feed the world with yes. a healthy diet. You just have to change some systems that are in place. Yeah, it'll take years and it's, it'll be a gradual, slow process. But yeah, so this, okay, so much is going on in this episode. This is kind of like our overview episode where we're just talking about everything. So we'll get into the environment, sustainability. There's so many aspects to this. Well, can I say something though? Because I think this is a pretty aggressive statement and I do think we. We, we share this idea and I've struggled with it myself, but I think it's important to say, I think that we all encourage obviously eating animal foods and I like to meet people where they're at. So I'm flexible with someone who's like a vegetarian and you know, they want to supplement with some healthy animal products in a way that suffices or satisfies their moral issue. I have no problem with that. Okay. But let's not pretend about this vegan issue like vegan diet especially raw vegan it, well both it makes no sense and i do not support it <laughs> yeah so that just let's just put that out there i'm sorry yeah sense. i'm yeah. sorry it, it sucks my goal with someone who comes to me that is a raw vegan or a vegan in general is to get them to stop doing this poisonous thing to themselves if someone is something else like a pescatarian vegetarian i'm a little more conservative and I will meet them where they're at. I think you could do that pretty healthy. You can, absolutely. Yeah, so you can do that, right? Yeah. It's a way, and, and, if they're, and usually it's a moral issue, which is fine. But just, just to be clear, like, veganism is poisonous. Mm -hmm. Like, it's poisonous. And, and yes, we live in a time where you want to, everyone's nice, everyone, I, I respect everyone's opinion, yada, yada. But when you're doing something poisonous and you're promoting something that's bad for people, we have to stand up and say enough is enough and and the reality is a lot of veganism the history of it is anchored in religious ideologies not real science mm -hmm. and the real science actually is dramatically against it so much so that there's a number of countries in the world that actually recommend against vegan diet yeah and oh, yeah. and I do I do think that that's part of our message right I think I was really scared to say that in the beginning and I, it's still going to incite a lot of, you know, bad blood. But the reality is our goal is to help people feel better. 
and you cannot feel better long term on a vegan diet. Yeah, and <laughs> right. So we should, Am I crazy? Oh, Is that cra- no, absolutely. We should tie this back into the whole raw alignment and Chrissy herself. Because she came from that world growing up, she was. The, 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 Am I crazy, Christy? No, no. Talk about that. talk about your story and, and. Yeah, I mean, I never had any health issues that I was like trying to reverse or that like came out of eating a plant based diet. But I was definitely uh, drawn to a plant based diet just based on what I was seeing on social media and being young and influential and or influenced easily and and I was like taught to believe that yeah, like a big huge salad is healthier than a piece of beef and there's nothing like sexy there's no sex appeal to a steak or there's like a judgment or stigma that kind of came around red meat for women and mm. like we're just kind of taught like oh women eat salads men eat steaks and it, it definitely messes with people's mm. minds and like how they view food and even if it's subconscious like I can guarantee there's a ton of young females that don't feel comfortable eating red meat and now that I've learned like the science behind it, like the bioavailability, like why we need these animal foods in our diet, it's so much easier to convince myself to eat them that now I'm very comfortable with it. But it took like a mental shift and, and that's what it's gonna take. It's gonna take people like us communicating this so that people will understand like it's okay to eat these foods. You don't have to feel like you're being judged as a, a girl um, eating like a bu- bunch of red meat. and. Like, it's not going to look as pretty on Instagram, but, like, you're fueling your body properly. (laughs) The other thing is, I think some people think that by avoiding animals, they're taking a moral high ground uh, uh, to bypass the poisonous components of our food system. And I always want to remind people that it's the entire agricultural system that includes both plants and animals that is not sustainable as it stands yeah, yes and it has nothing to do with meat per se it's our entire it's system goal. so when you buy a bunch of corn products and you support huge mega companies that are overcropping, monocropping uh plants that we just don't need so much of you're not bypassing in fact you're directly contributing to you're the system killing tons of small animals i mean right yeah they're, they're getting chopped up so they're being harvested you're ruining ecosystems you're ruining water systems yeah. like in so the people, area yeah. down the road you all the way to the run gulf of mexico run people off. are sacrificing their health for a moral issue that they're not actually supporting it's not but it's just being fed false like bad information and like people have good intentions like we were talking about but like it, choosing to eat tofu over a piece of meat like that you're not doing anything you're good for anything for anyone yourself. not the planet not yourself not your hormone levels, not farmers. Like no one wins when you replace real food with fake food. Yeah. Like done. All right, we'll, we'll have to get <laughs> into that whole thing later. So right. good, so good. But yeah, so I, I love that, you know, Christy's come full circle. It's been pretty recent when she really started to embrace animal foods. I mean, really just months. Yeah. Matter of months. and. <laughs> Even really? though you were doing keto, like you've been doing keto a year and a half, but you're doing kind of like a plant-based keto, plant, yep. super was, plant heavy. Relying on yeah, like oils and plants and avocados, uh, <laughs> and that's not good. I mean, well, well, it's doable, but it's again like. No, but if you're doing oils, like these are processed oils, there's still oils. Well, even, well, I was I consume well, quality oils. Okay, still, <laughs> I still wouldn't rely on oils. Right, but I. I guess you can. You, 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 you can get the ketogenic oils. diet if you yeah. want to get your ratios. You can get some good oils. Well, and again, we're not support here saying ketogenic diet. We're saying right. ketogenic metabolic therapy, and the diet we're recommending is a human ancestral diet. Right, and like I ate a meal yesterday and tested my ketones with it, and it was a very high protein diet. Like there, was like four over forty grams of protein, and it's high I, for you. But okay. <laughs> that's high for me. And and in, a, in terms of a ketogenic ratio, like that's right. a lot. Um, and uh, I sustained my ketosis. Like I, it didn't kick me out of ketosis. And I think it's interesting that there's this whole spin on protein now and like modifying a ketogenic diet to fit some, like an individual person based on what they can handle. And it's cool to test for me, I guess. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> but just don't be scared of protein. It's kind of the message that well, for one, I don't know why we need to be in ketosis constantly anyway. I've never really understood the ketogenic diet because I don't have epilepsy and I don't have a brain tumor. Therefore, I don't need to be in ketosis 24 <laughs> 7. So the whole sapien framework is based around being fat adapted, which is completely different from being in ketosis all the time. Being fat adapted means you switch over your body to 
be able to burn fat instead of carbohydrates and not rely on carbohydrates like every two hours. Like we definitely we should do a podcast where we define and talk about extensively carb dependence, fat adaption, and metabolic flexibility. Because yes. those are three terms I learned when I first discovered, and nutrient density. Mm -hmm. uh, those are terms I learned when I first discovered all this, and they've been instrumental in helping me mentally kind of put it all together. Yeah, yeah, we definitely have to get into all this. We should wrap it up. I want to do uh, questions do each episode, like a, at least one listener question. And What's our question today? Well, this one, we'll just make it easy and simple okay. because we're running out of time and it's about me, so we don't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, well, a lot of people just ask me on Instagram, like, oh, what do you eat? Like, what do you eat? Like, are you carnivore? You know, because I, I talk about it sometimes and, you know, I talk about how plant foods may have oxalates or different lectins mm -hmm. or all these different problems. So I'll just say, I never track my calories. I never track anything. I don't track ketones. I don't track blood glucose. But for the record, he tested his ketones at Paleo FX and he was in ketosis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 2.4 <laughs> uh, off of like a 16 hour fast. But so what I eat daily, probably around 95% of my calories are from animal foods when you add it up. Because you could eat, even if you eat a salad, depending on what Some oil calories, you use, yeah, yeah like yeah. That, that whole lettuce is not many calories. So no. I mean, I mainly just eat fish eggs meat i eat nose to tail i'm really into nose to tail that's a whole other podcast we can do but uh yeah there's not much i eat like sauerkraut kimchi avocados maybe some cucumbers just some of these safer plant foods i think i got too many oxalates i got caught on the whole kale shake thing. Yeah. So I was doing, like spinach and kale yeah. shakes every day for years i never did well with that so. yeah and i mean I, I cut a lot of weight when i started doing that i like trimmed down and I think I did some, some damage to my body, so now I'm, yeah, I just focus on nutrient density. I eat bone broth, I do uh, liver, yeah. I do cod liver. Uh, just, yeah, just get some sides of some plants in there. It's more for fun, for garnish. Uh, that's, but that's just for me. I don't know. You can make up your diet however you want. People ask me, like, I don't know why you're asking me. Maybe I'm just curious, but it, it doesn't matter what I do. You should uh, figure out what works for you and and do the research and know it's like oh maybe i shouldn't be eating kale every day year right. round because and spinach and you know that's not what we did it's, there's this whole story of eating seasonally and yeah. it's for a reason because there's oxalates and there's other things in plants and, you and really you want a diversity of foods yeah. in your diet and so so the moral of the story is i eat 90 something percent animal foods what was the question oh just what, what do i eat? actually oh. eat like what do i eat daily and in my carnivore and no i did it for a week and you know it's great but i just i don't want to i don't want to do that for my life i don't want i want to stay flexible in my gut microbiome you know, so it's like I want to go to a birthday party and have what we're eating. Right, and not feel really crappy because you haven't been eating yeah. anything but me. Yeah, I, I feel for me it's it's a number one fasting, and number two I just fix fixate on healthy proteins and low sugar fruits. So I was never one to really digest the leafy greens so well, and I never really understood why the hell everyone was eating so many of them. And <laughs> I still don't understand how someone could eat a whole bowl of salad and feel satisfied. It's just not real. <laughs> Um, but I do think low sugar fruits, so I define that by, you know, vegetables with seeds are essentially fruits mm -hmm. and so things like cucumbers and olives avocado. and avocados and bell peppers. Those are things I'm pretty liberal with yeah. just because I do think I've probably we consumed a lot of those and I do really well on it. And then I eat a lot of, um, I mix up my proteins every, every day almost. Mm, so you eat I, a lot of sardines. A lot of sardines, a lot of canned fish. I just yeah. love canned fish. It's such a healthy source of protein. It's easy, you don't need to Omega cook threes. it. Omega threes, it's just, oh, it's the best. And then I cook, you know, red meat three, four, five times a week. Um, I love myself some ground turkey burgers, some grass fed beef of all forms. And, uh, Shit. Then That's once it. or twice a week, I go crazy and get myself <laughs> some good noodles or some good fries. I, I definitely yeah, just, eat carbs once or twice a week at least. Live life and stay a little metabolically flexible. And especially if I do a huge epic workout, I'll go. I'll go on some of these like gnarly runs and I'll let myself have carbs. Oh, I do fine. I mean, I have no problem with that. Chrissy was some. Like, Chrissy's like, oh, I'm no. kind of cringing. <laughs> <laughs> We, after uh, Pale FX, I went straight to this burger joint, this like really nice place where they do, they cook their fries in beef tallow. Uh, and it's just a really good burger, and I loved it. 
I feel great. All right, what do you eat, Christy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as liberal with the carbs as these guys. Um, I don't do well with moderation. Like I like my rules. I'm very, um, I've always been very disciplined. So if I set these kind of rules for myself, it works for me. Great, and yeah. I think some people do struggle with moderation if they're like, oh, I'm allowed to eat almonds. Well, are you gonna eat five of them or are you gonna eat the whole bag? Well, I'm the no. person that will eat the whole bag. Yeah. Um, so I just like avoid things like that. Not almonds per se. I, still eat them <laughs> um but that's how i work so if i'm like so with carbohydrates and i typically avoid them pretty religiously um but i'm not as afraid of being kicked out of ketosis so uh i don't like i don't wake up in the morning being like oh i have to be in ketosis i just by virtue of the food choices that i eat and what i enjoy to eat i am in ketosis um but I, my diet is always evolving, so like yeah, even at the start of the year, it was pretty much a plant-based ketogenic diet. Um, now it's very much so animal foods. Like sometimes I eat just a carnivore meal, which yes. is crazy to me because yes. my my family thinks I'm crazy. They're like, oh, Chrissy's just hopping on the next fad. But no, like I feel amazing doing this. Uh, That's I, what Elise said too. We didn't really exactly say raw lion's eating like a hundred percent. Well, she's eating like ninety-five percent animal foods, and yeah. she feels amazing. And I asked her, like, why don't you just, you know, why don't you just kind of go halfway or, you know, kind of transition slowly? She's like, my body wants this. Mm -hmm. and I know it. I feel amazing. And I just have no time for plants. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, well, that's what I'm, I eat. Like, I eat eggs every day, try and eat red meat, and, like, Still pretty much a lot of avocados. I do eat a lot yeah, of avocados. Sardines, sardines cod like, liver. Cod I got Brian on cod liver and somehow he's getting credit for him. <laughs> Did you? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> so as we wrap up, I do. there's a common theme or a common important uh, message that I think the three from what we just said is everyone's diet has to be customized to the individual. And that diet evolves over time mm -hmm. and changes. And it probably should, which Brian was getting at with the seasonal eating. One, you need to f figure out what works for you. Two, you need to be flexible and willing to change. And three, you need to constantly reflect on yourself. Yeah. This goes back to this like spiritual, emotional health. Mm -hmm. Like, little reflect, stop for a second and be like, why am I binge eating every day? Well, do I feel better? You know, like mm -hmm. really reflect on it. And that's how we got to where we're at, right? is we're, we really sit there and think about, wow, I ate a bunch of meat yesterday and I feel better today. Or, wow, I ate a bunch of meat and I feel worse for some people, right? Some people may not respond as well to or this, though I doubt it, I doubt it, or like, whatever. Yeah, take a little longer to, yeah. Point is, our goal is to educate people, our goal is to share our message, and our goal is to help people feel better. And be open-minded. Open-minded, accessible, fun, we're, yeah. Practical. Practical, all these things. I don't want to just be like a textbook. I don't want to be, you know, we're going to be interactive. Talk to us online. Um, so what? So let's uh, wrap it up. Back. So our yeah. at food lies is food Brian's dot lies. at dr gary evolve at christy stores. <laughs> yeah. We got uh, sapien.org is our main page where you'll find all of our information and links to everything we've talked about. Um, foodlies.org is our for the film and for evolvehealthcare.com if you're interested in my clinic any of the things I'm doing um, or just reaching out to me that's a great way to do that and yeah at sapien on twitter I guess we'll start using the at sapien handle that we do it spent a year getting from a Brazilian company <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much yeah great times hit us um, yeah send in your questions and we'll try to answer them at the end of each show and uh, as our favorite comedian says, mahalo. Mahalo. <laughs> All right, that's it. Come back next week for some more great episodes. Please give this podcast a review on the iTunes store or app. It really helps to get this new podcast off the ground and get people to know about it. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much for listening. See you next week.